AI is changing the game with business and this includes Etsy. And if you are not learning how to leverage AI, you are leaving money on the table. If you are struggling to make sales, struggling to create your SEO, struggling to write descriptions, struggling with customer service, I'm gonna show you nine different tips that I have to leverage AI to help you in your store. Yes, I'm so excited to share the last one with you because it is a game changer. If you don't know me yet, my name is Christina. I've been selling print on demand for over three years now, I've made over a million in revenue and excuse the hair, I am currently traveling and filming. And I'm currently on a very humid island, which my hair is just blowing up. The first way that you can use this in your Etsy shop is to help you write your descriptions. And for a long time, we've been using this to write the top of our descriptions, which I'm going to show you next, but I find this part even cooler. Come into the product from Printify, for example, that you're going to sell and copy all of the text about this product. Product. So I actually just copied the top part here and at the bottom, I also copied the about, and then I'm gonna move over to ChatGPT. And then in ChatGPT, I just pasted these two paragraphs. And at the very bottom, I put an instruction that says, write me a point note Etsy description using above information, using section headers and emojis and point form. And then this is the result that I got. So scrolling down here, this looks very similar to different descriptions that you would see on Etsy. So scrolling down, we have all that information put into a way more digestible format for your customers. You can also feed it additional point notes, asking it to add in your refund policy, maybe a little about you. And if you're familiar with Etsy and the SEO game, you do know that you need a keyword filled sentence at the top of your description. And we're actually gonna come back to that when we get to the SEO portion of this video. Did you know that you should be filling out your alt tags on Etsy? I especially do it for my first image because this does help Google rank you higher when you actually have alt text put in there. And as well, Etsy has just stated when you fill out as much room as possible as they give you to tell them what you're selling, they're gonna rank you higher. So filling out your alt tag can't hurt at all. And I found the easiest way to do this is using AI. So when you click into Etsy and you click on your listing photo in the editor, in the corner, you're gonna see the alt text over here. And you can see that you have 500 characters and you're supposed to use this to explain what the picture is showing. To do this next step, you do need to have the upgraded plan for ChatGPT, the ChatGPT 4.0, if I'm saying that right. And then once you have that, you'll be able to upload a document and you're gonna upload that main photo. And then you're going to ask it to Write me a 500 character max alt tag describing this sweatshirt or whatever product, or you can even say photo. And then right here, it describes exactly what's in this photo. So if someone could not see your photo, it's a very descriptive way of telling exactly what this is showing. And again, Google is gonna rank you higher and it cannot hurt you on Etsy at all. In fact, bringing more traffic through Google is just gonna help your Etsy listing. So you're just gonna copy this and then you are going to paste this into that alt tag section. The next one is going to speed up your research. All you have to do is on ChatGPT, type in, I sell sweatshirts, mugs, t-shirts, whatever you sell on Etsy. What are some current graphic design styles trending in 2025, you can even bring it down to the month for sweatshirts or again, whatever product you sell. And it's going to spit back a whole bunch of trends that are doing well right now. And if you've been following me, you would have seen that I've already talked about a bunch of these because these have already started trending on Etsy. And if you look up a lot of these on Etsy, they are doing well. So this is actually taking a look at the data and giving it back to you in seconds. And if you just do research on Etsy yourself, you have probably noticed a lot of these things like the college and varsity aesthetic. Things like the Y2K aesthetic has been doing so well lately. The doodle style is a brand new one that I wanted to make a video on that actually probably started trending and I started noticing in the last few weeks. We have things like nature and cottage core themes, which is always done well, but it's still going strong into 2025 and so much more. So you can just take these, look them up on Etsy, see what's doing well and start creating designs with the current trends. And if you're having trouble coming up with additional keywords or key phrases for your title or your Etsy tags, then you can also use ChatGPT to help you try to understand the different ways someone might search for your product. Because if you've been following me for a long time, I'm very big on, instead of just doing research, I do research for my niches, but for a lot of my keywords, I'm just focused on other ways people are going to put this in the Etsy search bar. And I'm gonna use some long tail keywords, 
some short tail keywords, and I'm gonna use ChatGPT to help me brainstorm some of these. So you can put something like, I am selling a natural path sweatshirt on Etsy. The first keyword is custom natural path varsity sweatshirt. Write the rest of my Etsy title with phrases people will likely search on Etsy that relate to my design. Sorry, this is a mouthful. Separate the phrases with commas. And it gave me a bunch way too long for a title. You can give it a max character count, but I also want just to see a lot of these because maybe I'm gonna use some of these for my tags as well, since we have room for 13 tags. And a lot of these are the tags that I actually would use for my title. Things like naturopath crew neck. It's another way to type sweatshirt. Things like a natural path gift because people might be gift shopping for a product like this. Things like natural pathy sweatshirt, the longer way to put this, holistic health sweatshirt. And I'm gonna grab the ones that are most relevant to my design and I'm going to use those in my titles and my tags. Once I've crafted my title, we're gonna come back to that beginning of the description that I talked about earlier because that is red for SEO. So I'm going to paste in my title and at the bottom, I'm gonna put using these keywords, write me a max two. 200 character count description of my sweatshirt for the top of my description. And this is what I got. Cozy and stylish, this custom natural path varsity sweatshirt is the perfect for holistic health lovers. A soft natural path crew neck, great as a natural path gift or personalized wellness sweater. This is exactly actually the format that I use to write the top of my description made in seconds by just pasting in my title. And by the way, guys, don't worry about writing all of these down. If you would like, I've also made a Google Doc where I've just documented all of the different AI prompts that are shown in this video, plus a few extra that you can download that's in the description below in the top of my comment. The next one, I actually have a full YouTube breakdown on this, and I'm gonna link it as the next video up here, but I'm going to use ChatGPT to find out what questions I should be answering in my listing and what types of objections I should address as well that someone might have when looking at my design. So for example, if I have a sweatshirt, I'm gonna type something like, I sell sweatshirts on Etsy, write me a list of common questions concerns I should address in my photos or description to remove hesitancy from buying from me. So these are things someone might need to know before they make a decision or also some concerns or questions they might have that you need to make sure are being answered. Things like, what material is a sweatshirt made of? You need to make sure that that description we created earlier addresses this. Things like, is a sweatshirt true to size? And it gives you tips on what to do to address this as well. It says right here, provide a size chart and fit details. So nowadays you can also buy those fit kind of photos that show how the different sizes would fit on one model. Things like what colors are available? How is the design printed? Go back and make sure these are answered somewhere in your description. The most important ones should be in your photos so that people see it, but the more less important details can go into your description. And again, you just go through all of these. Can I customize the text? Where do I enter custom requests? Will I get approved before production? If this is relevant to your design, it's important to address it so people don't feel the need to go look for a competitor. They have all their answers in two seconds from your listing description and photos, shipping and processing, care instructions, return and exchanges, and then also a way to address general buyer concerns to help people trust your store more to buy from you, especially as a new seller. You can add in some custom re reviews, real photos of the product. You can add a disclaimer about will the color or size look the same in person. Again, this is just a great way to address any concerns that might stop someone from leaving your listing and buying from someone else. The next one is the more obvious one that people have been using AI for, and this is getting photos to use for your designs with AI. And the way that I usually do these is through Kittle. A lot of the times I'm trying to find matching elements to create a more unified design. So on Kittle specifically, either you can type in prompts or if you already have a design style in mind, like this, for example, you can grab the element that you want to model, right click it, hit save as image gen style, then go to image generator, and then you can type in a new prompt, but use the style of your existing image to create two similar designs. So I just typed in a corgi with a pink bow. I selected my reference image over here and then it spit out this right here. So you can either replace images with a similar feel, create sets, create different images that have say like three icons at the top, which I do a whole lot, or you can just use their image generator to create brand new vectors or elements for your designs. I also use it to come up 
with brand new niches to test out. So say for example, I have a natural path sweatshirt, the one that we did earlier, and it's been making sales. I wanna find some similar niches that maybe I can apply this design to that would have a similar kind of style in mind that they might also like a sweatshirt like this. So I typed in my naturopath varsity sweatshirt is selling well on Etsy. What are similar adjacent niches which might also sell well with this design style? And I got things like an herbalist, an apothecary, holistic health, an acupuncturist, someone who does yoga. We have things like chiropractors, massage therapists, dietitians, nutritionists, and so much more. So I can easily brainstorm more types of careers that I can apply this design style to, which might also like it because they have similar interests and styles and types of things they buy. I'm about to share with you one of my favorite use cases that I've worked out with ChatGPT, and that is getting it to help me with customer service. I'm a point note form type of person. I hate spending the time to craft a response that's extremely friendly. Sometimes you might have a customer who is annoying and you don't know how to respond nicely. Well, AI will help you do that. So the first fast way to do this is to just use it when you have difficult customers. If you need a way to write out your refund policy or why you don't accept refunds in a friendly way and you're struggling to do that because I always do, I come to ChatGPT, I give it the notes that I want and I just say, make this friendlier for my customer. And I'm sure this has saved me from so many bad reviews. But now let me show you the more complicated advanced way to help get ChatGPT to do majority of your customer service. And let me know in the comments below because this video is getting kind of long if you want a full length tutorial on this because I'm going to go through it generally fast. But what you need to do is you actually need to have the upgraded, again, ChatGPT, the paid for version, and then you're gonna create a project. And this is your customer service project. And what you're gonna do when you have a project is you have two spots here with project files and instructions. And the first thing we need to do is create our project file. And all you have to do is go back to all of your Etsy responses, common questions that you get, maybe even some rare ones that you get. And what you can do is create a Google Doc or a Google Sheet with the question and the answer in it. And you're going to create pretty much a database that you can save and then you're going to upload it to these project files. And then in the instructions, you're going to tell it what to do with this. So I put reference the customer service scripts file, which is that file I put in there. Use a friendly casual customer service tone with some smiley faces or emojis when it makes sense. So now when I get a customer service question, I can just paste it into that chat and ChatGPT is going to look at how I've responded similarly to things in the past and it's going to create a response based on both that file and the instructions that I gave it. And I only have to do that once. And now I have everything under this project. So for example, I got a question that said, hi, I just got my order, but the print is crooked. And ChatGPT already knows that I need a photo to be able to make a decision on if I can refund or reprint this. So it's created this wonderful response based on my past responses. Within seconds, this would have taken me a few minutes to actually write out, but now I can just copy and paste this. It's the instructions that I needed. It's in a friendlier tone, probably than I would have put this as well. And it just looks like a great customer service response. This is something I've recently figured out with my store that we're starting to use more and more in our store just to speed up customer service because half the time just typing the response is what takes so long and sometimes you forget forget how you've answered to things in the past. So you can pretty much just have it do that remembering for you. This might take up some time to build up that file, but if you are also curious with that video and let me know in the comments below if you think it would be helpful, I can create kind of a standardized version document that I've used that has my common responses and questions that I've had. And then you can just add on to that. But yeah, before I do all that, just let me know if you would actually like that before I spend my time building that out for you guys. That would be super helpful and then I'll let you know when that's available. Those are my top ways that I am now leveraging AI in 2025. And I have said in 2025, my main goal is to find out how to utilize and really capitalize on AI. It's growing, it's here, we can't fight it. Follow the flow. People sometimes are hesitant to use AI, but it's not going anywhere. And those that learn how to leverage it are going to have a step up from everyone else that's hesitant. And if you have any AI tips, prompts that I'm missing, let me know in the comments below. I'm so curious to hear how people are utilizing this in their business. And if this video helped at all, if you could drop me a like and subscribe, that would help so much. Thank you guys. And I'll see you next week.